With the launch of RTX 5000 series GPUs, Nvidia has released a new version of DLSS called DLSS 4. This version of DLSS replaces the tried and tested convolutional neural network or CNN version of DLSS that was first introduced in 2020. The replacement is a so-called transformer model, which requires more tensor core horsepower, but in return it promises quality upgrades to all the things DLSS does, super resolution, ray reconstruction, and even frame generation. Significantly, this new transformer model for DLSS is backward compatible with all RTX cards that have ever come out. So as long as your RTX GPU supports the DLSS type in use, you can run it. In this video, I will compare the older CNN model to the transformer model in a variety of scenarios specifically for DLSS ray reconstruction to see where and how the new model improves on quality. I will also investigate the performance of the new model to see how viable DLSS 4 is on older RTX GPU generations, including a cursory look at DLSS Super Resolution, which I will cover more completely in an upcoming video after this one. Without wasting any time, I want to get right into this here by looking at ray reconstruction first, as I think this aspect of DLSS was the one where there was the largest room for improvement. Going back to ray reconstruction's launch in 2023 in Cyberpunk, this technology to denoise ray traced imagery was extremely promising in many areas. It had greater light responsiveness, reflection clarity, and more. But depending upon the lighting conditions and the game title, it exhibited a number of obvious and less obvious obvious image quality issues. I thought this was most egregious in Cyberpunk 2077 where you could find severe issues with smudging and ghosting on mid-distant moving objects or objects that were indirectly lit. You could find examples of an over-sharpening and stylization occurring which gave the image an oily and runny unstable look. There could also be issues with how art was displayed, like skin. Based upon my experience of testing across Alan Wake 2 and Cyberpunk 2077, the Transformer model for DLSS 4 for re reconstruction radically changes up the image resolve and in total fixes nearly all standing issues with ray reconstruction that I have detailed in past videos. So first let me start with detail and stylization. Basically that oily painterly look that looks a little bit overly sharp that we see in ray reconstruction with the CNN model. Flicking the new model on and off here, for example in Alan Wake 2, you can see the average difference that the model brings to image quality. Looking at the tiled walls, I think the increase in surface texture detail is pretty obvious just by flicking back and forth. You see more of the normal mapped surface detail coming through and it shows off the little imperfections on the tiled surfaces and how those play with light. But the second thing I want you to recognize is how the lines of the tiles in the old CNN model in a side-by-side -side have a different look to them. Notice how the surface detail and the edges of the tiles where they meet the grout are actually not straight lines in the older model on the left here. Such details should be straight, but they have a wavy and feathery look to them. This is what I called stylization in the past, and I think it is a good descriptive term. Looking at the right on the transformer model, we can see that the lines of the tiles and the grout are now straight, so it lacks that stylization. Going to other scenes of similar normal map detail like this, like at this wooden table we have here, we can see that more surface detail is preserved on the right in the new transformer model. But I also want you to notice the way the detail is resolving on the table. On the left, the lines of detail that are resolved kind of have a wavy feathery look to them. A stylization that gives them a kind of painterly look. This is not desired image quality. On the right though, the resolve is more clinical and this stylization is kept at a minimum or completely eliminated. This change of getting rid of stylization is arguably a lot more obvious in Cyberpunk 2077, where if you look at thinner lines like on these branches here, you can see how the old CNN model resolved them with this intense stylization. It kept them stable arguably, but it also kind of fattened them out and gave them dark curves which made them look like they were painted on. The base art obviously was not that way. This removal of stylization on the right in the transformer model has a big effect on the image quality in total in the games with ray reconstruction and arguably the most in cyberpunk where it occurred most regularly there. This is especially true of images in motion, where the stylization could be overriding and otherwise straight lines became wobbly. 
such as this door opening here. The lines on the door have a stylized waviness on them on the left, but much more detailed straight lines on the right, as it should be, as that is actually how the surface texture is. Another improvement is just generally in detail and stability in movement or when still. Objects like the fences here, with thin wires as we see in Alan Wake 2, have more of their lines completed in the chain links, and they also have more stability when the camera is still, so there's less flicker there on the right than on the left, although I would say that it is quite minor in the CNN model on the left. This extends to movement as well. Check out me here running forward as Saga in the town. Now watch as I ping pong the footage. Here I would like you to concentrate both on the power lines above and the metal pole from which the street light is hanging. On the power lines, you can see there's greater stability there. There's just less flicker in the transformer model on the right on the thin lines. Looking at the metal pole, you can see that the edge of the metal pole when flush against the sky has less jaggies on it. And in motion, that means it is anti-aliased better, leading to less obvious stair stepping. So detail is much higher in stills, with the stylization aspect being largely eliminated, and detail that is resolved tends to be more stable, less flickering, and less breakup in motion. Another larger upgrade to ray reconstruction is in how it treats skin, and this is related to the stylization I just talked about. With the old CNN model in games, it would bring out arguably too much of the detail in the skin from the normal maps. This gave people's faces a papery and kind of craggy look, which ended up aging them a lot in the subjective sense. In real life, light scatters beneath skin, which subjectively softens the harshness of light on the skin's surface. With good subsurface scattering, you should arguably see less detail on a skin surface as the light is diffusing there. The CNN model was not respecting this shading nuance. So if we look specifically at this example here in Cyberpunk of Jackie with the CNN model, we can see how there's a lot of detail in the skin of his face. The pores, the scars, the lines are all coming through. We can also notice how there's not a lot of reflective detail from the oils in his skin, and this is making his skin looking very detailed and dry. Notice also how the shadows are very gray and black looking. Now let's switch over to the transformer model, and we get that subsurface scattering look back. Less of the detail on the skin surface is now visible, as light is now diffusing better across its surface. Also notice the shadowed regions have a reddish hue to them as light is permeating them underneath the surface of the skin. It is also important to notice how we can see some of the reflection detail coming back on the skin's raised areas, which wasn't there before, and it gives the skin a more oily look. I think this is a rather large difference when you see them back to back or side by side, and I think this is a quality change in favor of the new Transformer model. It is really obvious in this area of cyberpunk that we are seeing with Jackie, of course, but it is also evident in Alan Wake 2. Now that game doesn't have the best subsurface scattering, I would say in general, but for example, in this cutscene here, we can see that Alan Wake's cheek with the old CNN model has this normal map detail being brought out very intensely. If we switch to the Transformer model, we can see that that normal mapped detail is less obvious. And side by side, we can see the color of the areas in shadow is now redder in hue as light is diffusing beneath the surface of the skin. You can see this difference across any character in the game, really, when you bring the camera up close. And sometimes it's a bigger difference than in others. The last and perhaps most obvious difference with the new Transformer model for ray reconstruction comes from the heavy decrease in ghosting and smearing. Now the previous CNN model in general had distant moving objects having the propensity to ghost in all games, like we can see here with this character in the background of Alan Wake 2. This would increase more at the mid distance in areas that were indirectly lit, but specifically in Cyberpunk, this ghosting and smearing could occur anywhere that was primarily indirectly lit, even if it was really close to the camera. Like here in this hovel in the drainage ditch area of the game. There's no direct lighting here, and this poor guy's head 
head lolling back and forth, ghosts fiercely as it moves. There's like this super long tail of motion blur and strangely streaky look to it all. You could find this in any of the areas indirectly lit in Cyberpunk. It'd be all over the place and it would make the game look poor in such areas at times. This was especially obvious with NPCs where this smearing would combine with the stylization, the lack of subsurface scattering, and it would give people these ever morphing facial features when they moved. It gave them a very uncanny look. If you were to just look at random passerbys and NPCs, they could look strange when indirectly lit. Move over to the new Transformer model and the difference is really stark. That guy in the shed I showed off earlier, his head moving back and forth no longer has the incredible smearing and ghosting while moving. It looks a lot better. I would say that the lighting detail on him as he moves isn't 100% stable, but at least the edges and inner surface detail is not completely smoothed over and smeared over this time around with the Transformer model. When you combine the increased detail, stability, getting rid of the stylization, and getting rid of much of the smearing and ghosting, now the Transformer model makes NPCs at any distance look a lot more natural, with skin that will react better to lighting and diffusing it, and there will be no added in ever-changing blotchiness and stylization lines that made them look uncanny as they did before. I would say in total, Cyberpunk indeed looks a lot better now with the Transformer model for ray reconstruction than it did before with the older CNN model. So yeah, the new Transformer model for ray reconstruction is a lot better in most of the areas I've investigated so far. That is obvious enough. I say most of the areas as there are some areas that I've investigated where things have not changed too much. For example, glass reflections resolve similarly with the old and the new model. The basic problem there is that when the camera sits still for a while, both the old and the new model do not have good clues as to when to stop aggregating temporal data. So while you sit there without moving, objects in motion in glass reflections can get smeary and almost transparent. Only moving the camera again would get them to stop ghosting. Beyond that, I have also found two regressions in my testing. One of them can be found in Alan Wake 2, specifically with the TV screens in that game, if the camera is sitting still. Much like the glass reflections I just talked about, you can see images becoming overly temporally accumulated, leading to obvious smears and ghosts and other strangeness. This does not actually happen with the older CNN model. Another kind of regression I've seen, in the performance mode at least, is a kind of vertical striation showing up in some parts of the images at times when the camera is still. Like here, when looking at this water pipe. Notice the water on the ground in front of the pipe has this ordered vertical lines look in its surface. That didn't happen in the CNN model previously, even though it was obviously heavily stylized and a lot blurrier. I've seen this occasionally happening in the performance mode, and I'm not exactly sure if it's coming from the Transformer model itself, or it is just a byproduct of how the games do their ray tracing. Either way, I notice it, and you could potentially see it too. But that is about it. I think I need more time altogether though to investigate ray reconstruction over more titles over time. Though I would say with my first more in-depth look here, it looks better in nearly all cases than the previously used CNN model. With that increased quality in mind, how does this new model perform across generations of RTX GPUs? Well, looking at the RTX 5090, the cost of ray reconstruction using the Transformer model isn't really a big deal. All the extra quality there at the same input resolution as before, with merely 7% decreased average frame rate over the course of the game's benchmark, with ray tracing set to Psycho in 4K quality mode. On the RTX 4000, I actually saw a better result here, with the same settings seeing only roughly a 5% decrease in average performance with ray reconstruction on here using that Transformer model in 4K quality mode. Performance only starts 
becoming very important when going down to Ampere and Turing cards based upon my testing. On the RTX 3090, for example, using the Transformer model at 4K quality mode reduces the average frame rate by more than 31% over the course of the benchmark using the settings I mentioned earlier. On RTX 2080, TI, it was even worse, with a 35% reduction in average frame rate over the course of the benchmark. So it appears the Transformer model for ray reconstruction is a lot heavier on Ampere and Turing GPUs. Unfortunately, reducing output resolution does not seem to help. As we can see here on the RTX 2080 Ti, reducing output resolution to 1080p still shows the Transformer model for ray reconstruction running a bit more than 30% worse than the CNN model. Sure, it looks a good deal better, but on these older RTX GPUs, you're paying a much heftier cost for it. This, though, is interestingly not the case for plain old super resolution. Looking at this chart here I've conjured up, you can see how the transformer model for super res does get a few percentage points more expensive on older RTX generations, but not to the same degree as ray reconstruction. Here I presume the model is just doing a lot less work in general with super resolution, so older RTX tensor cores can cope well. The Transformer model being relatively cheap with super resolution though is good to see and will form the basis of my next video, which will cover it exclusively. Getting to the end here, ray reconstruction with the Transformer model from DLSS 4 has massively increased image quality in nearly all the core areas that I've looked in. It has boosted it so much that if you put the Transformer model here in the middle in performance mode next to the balanced of the CNN model on the left and quality mode of the CNN model on the right, you can see how many areas of the image in the middle in performance mode Transformer model are a lot better looking than even the quality mode of the CNN model on the right. You'll see far less ghosting on that character's head there, there's more coherent texture detail, and there's importantly no stylization occurring. Now, not every game and every aspect of image quality will see the Transformer model looking better in performance mode than the old CNN model in quality mode, but these first results I'm seeing in Alan Wake 2 and Cyberpunk here definitely point in that direction. But as always, I'll need more testing to actually say something super definitively. But for now, for the most part, the Transformer model is more expensive to run with ray reconstruction, but some of that reduced performance can be offset by lowering the internal resolution, and you'll still be getting quite a bit better IQ than you would have gotten before with the older CNN model. Anyways, that is the end of this video. I will have a video covering DLSS 4 super resolution, hopefully in short order. If you enjoyed it, like, subscribe, hit the bell, support on Patreon, and as always, this is Alex, bring you farewell, and auf Wiedersehen!